the SV Boney 30 millimeter guide scope. This cute little scope, it's pretty cool, okay? It, it really does a great job and it costs nothing. Like you can get these sometimes on sale for like 40 bucks or less. Now there's a bunch of little tiny things though that you can do to it to make it a better scope. And I'll show you them in this video, okay? Some of these things are kind of difficult and some of, no, most of them are really easy, okay? I'm gonna start with the easy stuff and we'll do the hard stuff at the end. The first little piece of advice I have for you, it's pretty simple, okay? It actually just has to do with the way you stick your camera in this guy. So when you get it, okay, this red collar right here basically is what loosens and allows you to unscrew it so that it gets to focus, okay? And it'll screw at this point right here, as you can see. Now this right here is approximately focused if you're using a planetary camera, okay? Now the planetary cameras, they come with a two inch, a two and a quarter inch nose piece. Don't use it, okay? Okay, don't, don't use this, okay? There are threads on the back of this guy, which are a much, much better way to secure your planetary camera to this guy. This is a nice, sturdy connection. And another really cool thing about this thing is that you can rotate the entire scope and basically you want to get the writing in it so that it's at a right angle to the mount okay and what that does is it kind of simplifies some of the math that phd2 has to do in order to figure out okay it's moving this way and so forth and, and how it needs to interact with your mount okay the other thing okay now if you have one of these types of cameras, you know, this is a dedicated guide camera, all right? You actually want to basically take this section right here and just screw it all the way out as far as it will go, all right? Keep going, keep going, keep going. And the reason for this is that you actually want this guy to be as far into the tube as you can get it. And that is because this cord right here, basically, if it were, if it were to tug on it, let's say if it was hanging out like this, okay, it could flex a little bit. And that flexure could mess up your guiding. If this cord was to move around, or maybe the weight, the way its weight leaned on this thing was to change throughout the night as the scope turned. So, yeah, basically, unscrew this guy all the way as far out as it goes and then basically push it in and out and watch it until you find focus and then lock it down okay and that brings up another thing okay focus focus does not have to be exact with these things you can have actually a pretty rough focus just eyeball it folks so let's say this is our exposure graph okay if a star is in focus it may actually look like this where basically the pixels, okay, are basically going to be completely saturated here at the top. And then the only way that the software has to look for the center, in other words, the exact center of where the actual star is, is to kind of look at these tails right here, all right? That's if it were in focus, okay? Now, if you slightly defocus it, what's going to happen is it's gonna have a mean distribution that kind of looks like this, all right? And what this does is it gives the software a much wider plethora of data from which it can actually determine the exact center of the star. Now, PHD2 using its multi-star multi guiding system nowadays does try to pick stars that look like this. But if you have things slightly out of focus, then the focus isn't perfect, you know, you're gonna have more of these to choose from and you want more to choose from, always. Next up, this is going to not necessarily cost you anything, but it might require you be a little industrious with your resources. So this is 3D printed. This basically right here is something that I will link to in the, in the document below. I'll give you an STL. And all it is is actually a shade extension for this thing that clips over it like so, all right? And one of the reasons why I like something like this is that it basically keeps stray light out of here, which will increase contrast. Increase in contrast is always something that you want 
not necessarily fixing chromatic aberrations. It's kind of one of the reasons why buying an ED scope or an APO scope to guide with is kind of a waste of money because the, you know, the size of the star or the the focus of the actual wavelengths of light don't really matter. And matter of fact, we can even have it slightly out of focus, just like we just talked about. But contrast does in fact matter because contrast affects the background. What we want as deep a difference in difference from the background and the star itself. And something like this kind of helps. Also, something like this will keep dew off of your front lens element because the front lens element on the SV Boney is a little bit exposed. Actually, it's rather exposed. It's right there. And this pretty much fixes that. The next thing that I would definitely recommend you do is SV Boney also sells some excellent dew heater straps. And that is another accessory that, you know, you might want to add to your plethora. And these don't cost too much. Now the last tip that I'm going to give you before we get into something that is really kind of hairy is to just keep your gear clean, okay? Keep the window on the camera clean and free of dust and keep your optics clean. If there's dust on there on the inside or on the outside or if there's maybe dew and condensation that has collected on it and it has left watermarks, clean it, okay? And with something like this, you know, hey, yeah, you could even use Windex. Okay, today's coatings are much more durable than the coatings from 40 years ago. And a lot of people freak out and say, how dare you use Windex? You can use Windex, okay, on today's optical glass. It's not a big deal, especially with something like this. This only costs 40 bucks. I have no idea if this is going to work, so we'll see if it even makes it into the video. So, contrast levels are very important. Now, on the edges of the glass, I don't know if you can see it in here, you can actually see the white of the outside perimeter of the glass, okay? On higher end optics, that's usually blackened, okay? They take a black ink to it or know, epoxy enamel of some kind. And you just separate these two pieces right here. And this, this right here is our lens element. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this thing apart and we're going to blacken the edges, all right? Now, first things first, I'm going to take a blue magic marker here and I'm going to write B for the back one. This is the back lens element and F for the front. Now we can't get them mixed up when we put it back together. Next up here, okay, this is a spanner wrench. This is kind of just one of those things that you will have in your collection as you get more into this hobby. So, spanner wrench across here. I'm going to lock this in place. I think this spanner wrench cost me $12. Boy, that came apart really easy. I am a little nervous doing this. Mostly because this is stainless steel, and stainless steel is pretty tough on glass if you scratch it. Right. Oh, and this is nice. These two pieces of glass are actually cemented together, which is fantastic. This will make our job easy. So, here we go. Black Sharpie marker. I have done this once before actually to an old 60 millimeter Tasco scope. So yeah, we're just basically going to blacken the edge. And what this will do is any light that comes in at angles, okay, that would, would have bounced off the inside edge of this glass will be absorbed rather than bouncing around and reducing our contrast levels. And by the way, I did wash my hands right before I did this. It's pretty cold here, so I am not sweating the least bit. Now, if you're in a warmer climate or you're doing this in the summertime, look at that. See, I haven't done this part yet, but look at how black that has become now because the rest of it is blocking the light. Uh, but back to the clean hands thing, you definitely want your hands to be clean when you do this. And free of oils. I'm not a particularly sweaty-handed person. 
If you are, wear rubber gloves. All right, that looks beautiful. Okay, so F in front, we're gonna drop that in first. And we'll put our ring back in here. I'm gonna take the spanner wrench again, put it in those two grooves, and just a little bit. Do not, do not force this or over tighten it. You know, that, that, that should be a very gentle move, just until it stops. Now let's take some Windex and clean this off. And then our final step before we reassemble this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold it so that the glass is perpendicular 90 degree to the plane of the earth. Blow it off front and back. And then we're gonna stick it on without tilting it up. If you tilt it up like this, well guess what? You gotta blow it off again because instantly you're gonna start collecting more dust on there. All right, there we go. Oh yeah, and that 3D printed shade also comes with a cap. So there you go. There's, the, there's some really affordable ways to improve your SV Bony Guide Scope.